Today we're playing Pokemon Stone Dragon 3 with only shiny Pokemon. This game is set in the Unova region and basically features as somewhat of a GBA version of Pokemon Black and White. Say somewhat because you're playing as N, you'll be going through the region with your companion Ash. He'll be by your side for every single adventure you embark on and will help you out in many battles. Since this is the Unova region, our main goal is going to be taking down Team Plasma. As for the question of the day, I want you to tell me which companion you would love in a mainline Pokemon game. If you could choose any character out of the anime or games that you could run through a region with, who would it be? For me, it'd probably be James because he has some of the most entertaining quotes Pokemon has ever seen. And with all of that out of the way, let's see what this newly revamped Unova region has got in store for us. We get greeted by Professor Juniper, who shows off a Pokemon that's normally not even in the Unova region, Nidoran. So let's yeet ourselves out of here and pick our character. And Sprite looks absolutely marvelous. And seeing Ash made me tear up a bit because I very much miss him in the anime. As we spawn in our room, we immediately go over to our computer because we have an email here. Professor Juniper asks me to come to the lab and pick up a Pokedex as well as a Pokemon because we're going to have to do research for her. Which is weird because N normally despises the thought of people carrying Pokemon in Pokeballs. But I guess this is an alternate universe, so we'll just have to roll with it. But then it all becomes clear because Team Plasma barges up the stairs and tells me to get off the computer because they're taking over this town after their defeat two years ago. They're back and ready to stir the pot of trouble again. As we head downstairs, we see one of the professor's aides standing there, absolutely terrified by these people in black clothes. Team Plasma goes on to explain that they released all the Pokemon from Professor Juniper's lab so that nobody can shoot choose the starter Pokemon anymore, causing there to be less trainers. They also seem to be led by one of the Shadow Triads, which might mean that Getsus is still in control. Team Plasma leaves and we get to take to the streets where all the kids around are crying because Team Plasma stole all of their Pokemon. Head over to the lab, but everybody seems to be quite alright. No real injuries, but the professor does have a problem because we can't acquire our first Pokemon now, and that's when Ash comes in and reunites with the professor after two long years. He's here because Team Plasma raided the city and he wants to help the citizens. As it turns out, the real reason why they actually invaded this town is because they wanted the Dex Nav. You know, that thing that makes you locate Pokemon and see EVs and stats and stuff? That's what they were after. Ashton asks me if he can help me capture my first Pokemon and once we have done that, we can maybe look together for clues as to where Team Plasma might go next. This way we can create our very own adventure to for going to the first route, I check out somebody's house and there is a random shiny pat rat in there. I don't think this girl realizes how lucky she really is. Me and Ash finally find our way over to Route 101 and just when we're about to head over into the tall grass, Iris comes along. She already seems to know Ash from their journey through the region together. After they reminisce a bit over their good times together, she decides to help me out by giving me a gibble as my starter. And she starts talking Portuguese for some reason too. This gibble isn't shiny so we're going to kick it out of here and go over to the next grass patch where one of the overworld pokemon is a shiny level one pat rat not gonna lie i really like this guy's blue eyes kaiba would be proud of me for capturing this guy go over to stration city and try to help our pokemon but there seems to be a defect with nurse joy's equipment so they're going to try and update it and instead we can go back to the lab to pick up our real starter because the professor just had a new shipment of pokemon in yeah the starter are Oshawott, Tepig, and Snivy, but if you look closely, they are a different color. That's right, your starter in this game is shiny too, and I went with Oshawott because water types are most likely the most overpowered. With Hilda on the team, we can get past Stration City onto Route 2, where we run into Team Plasma once more. This time, they're ambushing me and Ash because they're trying to steal our Pokemon. We can't let that happen, so with my Oshawott and his Pikachu, we can shoot them back to the cave where they came from. This wasn't the end of them because once we entered the cave, we saw that it was infested with the pirates themselves. One thing I also have to mention, the battlegrounds in this game are absolutely fire. Speaking of fire, this one literally has lava in the background. We're mowing through the cave, shooting down grunt after grunt until eventually Hilda evolves into Duwan with a nice purple pants. We also find our next shiny on this floor, Poe the Red Pancham. And not only that, we also find a pink mole 
on the next floor. These two are personally not my favorite shinies. These two are definitely strong team members that we might use until the very end. Just before exiting the cave, we get stopped by one of the shadow triads. He isn't too happy that we just defeated all of his subordinates in this cave. So after that, we go on to confront him about what their plan is. And it's basically the same one as in black and white too. Freeze over the region and take over everything. We tell them that they're never going to be capable of doing this. And that's when he shows me how capable he really is. With a totally unfair fight where he beats me up with level 50 Pokemon. So yeah, that's a mandatory loss. Then leaves the cave with his last words being stay out of Team Plasma's way. So at first we decide to do that. We head back to Strashen City to recollect our thoughts and challenge the first few gym leaders, Silent, Chili, and Cress. Grass type specialist is our first opponent and funnily enough, our water type just fury cutters through both of his Pokemon without even getting hit. The second leader, Chili, obviously gets washed away as well and the final one, Cress, couldn't stand up to my fury cutters either as we slice them up in pure duot fashion. So with our first ever gym badge in hand, it's time to make our way through the routes again and on top of that, grind a ton of our Pokemon on knuckleheaded trainers. Speaking of training Pokemon, have you ever wanted to train a little guy and make him compete against other players in races? Well, so have I, and that's where this video's sponsor, Pocket Champs, comes in. It's basically a super fun game where you have to train your very own champion in four different stats where he will run faster, swim faster, climb faster, or fly faster. Obviously, the higher your stats get, the easier your games will be against other players online. And if you don't have a lot of time to play mobile games, well, don't worry about that either because it's really easy. Once you train your guy up, you can just jump into a race and it will race for you. And to give yourself even more of an advantage, you can pick gadgets for every single race that not only look super cool, but also help you even more. But you have to make sure you pick the right ones, otherwise you're not going to end up in first place. There are over 40 gadgets for you to collect and upgrade, and all of the stages you play on look absolutely beautiful and super cute. Not only that, you can also customize your character with different skins, which works kind of like a Pokedex if you want to collect them all. I've partnered with Pocket Champs to offer you guys a free starter pack of 1,100 gems, and you can get it by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen to download Pocket Champs. These gems will be added to your account on September 4th, but the rewards are only available until the 3rd of September, so you better be fast. A huge thank you to Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video, and let's get right back into it. I went to the local Pokemon Center, talked to a guy there who was selling a Riolu, which turned out to be a shiny Riolu, and it's also holding the Mega Lucarioite. So in true Riley fashion, we decide to take care of this little girl. Shortly after, we run to Team Plasma again, as they're trying to steal my Pokemon once more. This time, we actually lost the battle, and they were forcing me to release one of my Pokemon, which I personally think is a really cool feature that could definitely be implemented in more ROM hacks. But luckily for me, the safe feature exists, because I'm not giving away any of my shiny Pokemon. So after overleveling Hilda just a teeny tiny bit, we were able to take down their team. The most annoying thing there was obviously their dry skin Krogunk, which I couldn't really hit with anything. My water type moves either get cancelled out, and the rest of my moves are straight up just not very effective. But with Ash's help, we still kicked their butts and arrived in Fur Bank City. But before going to Roxy, the gym leader, I decided to check out the next route already. Because I thought, if I'm already having trouble with Team Plasma members, I'm certainly not going to be able to take on a gym leader. Instead, we got stopped by two black belts, Nilton and Nilvado, who were ready to punch us in the gut. Luckily, we threw out our Pokemon just in time, and I showed them my Street Fighter moves that I learned back in the day. Once we defeat them together with Ash's Primeape, they ask of us to not tell their master, because one day we will have to face him, and he'll be way stronger than them. I followed round 107 and ended up in Nacreen City. I know we still haven't beaten Roxy yet, but I still wanted to check it out before I went back. As it turns out, our path here gets blocked probably because we haven't beaten her yet, and the gym leader Lorena also doesn't seem to be working right now. But we did get a tip from Iris saying that she is somewhere in town and we can probably find her and send her back here. So we end up in the Pokemon Center where Iris is already talking to Lorena and explaining that we obviously want to challenge her gym. But that that's not possible if she isn't doing her job. She takes that very personally and leaves in a fits of rage, ready to devour me once I enter her gym again. I did not go back to Roxy, so I entered the big woman's gym first, and she threw out her guard dog, who ripped open every single one of my shiny Pokemon, traumatizing me enough to go back 
back to the second gym and try my shot at her first. On my way over there, my Patra did evolve into a Watchhog, losing its beautiful blue eyes and trading that in for a pretty ugly green jacket that makes it look a little bit like Luigi. Let's hope he can defeat as many Pokemon as Luigi catches ghosts, because he's one of my three Pokemon that I can take into this fight with Roxy. And it was a sweep with Hilda, we didn't even need Watchhog. We just went in the pool and sent pulses of water their way to catapult her Golbat, Viper, and Whirlipede out of here. Second gym badge acquired, but before taking on Lorena, I decided to enter that one cave that was blocked off before. As it turns out, Team Plasma is in here once again, but they just seem to be scouring around, not really doing anything specific because there's no boss fight here. They're just randomly roaming around the cave. So after taking them all out, I did find the coolest crocodile to ever exist, a shiny Sandile. Because Ash is such a cool crocodile, I knew I had to grab this one too. We didn't have three evolutions to get through. We're going to grab Lorena's guard dog and make sure it never bites anybody ever again. Those are Samurott, Pangoro, and finally Excadrill. Me and the Dream Team barged into Lorena's gym, and Poe the Dragon Warrior starts off with a special pinky attack, sweeping away Kangaskhan and doing a ton of damage against Stoutland. But then we see our very first Mega Pokemon, Mega On. Dino, and since we're four times weak to a Dazzling Gleam, we get Exodia obliterated right there and then. Wu, on the other hand, is ready to deal some damage. Metal Clawing the Audino, Drill Running the next Pokemon Kinshino, and eventually also taking down Stoutland with a rapid spin and a Drill Run giving us plus one in speed, which allows us to outspeed Saucebug, but it's not enough. Our Metal Claws fail to take it down, and we get Horn Leech to death. Instead, I bring an SUV, the Riolu, to smash some rocks on top of the deer's head, but that is also not enough. Watchhawk can finish it off with a slam, but Braviary, being the symbol of the American Eagle, swoops down on me and forces out Samurott. With one more water pulse, the battle ends, and we emerge victorious with our third gym badge in hand. In round 108, however, another encounter waits for us, a shiny Sawaddle that looks only a little bit different from the regular one, and I'm not gonna lie, I just yeeted this in the box and never saw it again. At the end of the round, just before entering the next city, we run into Team Plasma harassing a boy with a grottle. They're obviously trying to steal it and release it, but just before they're about to take it away, we step in and scold at them for stealing Pokemon and using them as tools for their own gain. They keep on denying this because they're trying to do good for Pokemon, but who believes these pirates anymore? They just want power. That's all. Guy with the grotto was able to flee, and we battled Team Plasma so that they can't go after him. They did have a pretty good team of an extra drill Malamar Phantom and Miss Magius, but nothing Poe couldn't smack in the face. We then check out Lakunosa Town, and we once again find another random trainer that has a shiny Sawaddle as her Pokemon, not seeming to realize what she has. I'm kind of wondering why Team Plasma didn't just steal this. Speaking of shiny Pokemon, on Route 109 we saw a beautiful beautiful shiny yellow Inkay. And I think this is the first time in my life I see shiny Inkay and I kind of like it. We'll just have to see if it lives up to the expectations Malamar has already said because his color scheme is impeccable. But Team Plasma isn't done harassing literally everybody and everything yet because this time they're in the lava cave and I'm guessing they're trying to wake up Heatran or something. They really see us as a threat now because we've been able to boycott about 10 of their plans at this point. They still go on and throw out their Pokemon against two of the best trainers that have ever existed. Despite having Beaverill, god of all beavers on their team, Hilda and Noctowl were the perfect combo to stand up to their team, but they immediately bring out reinforcements once defeated. This one reinforcement guy gets one tabbed by every single move of Samurott. And when we're done fighting, he can't believe that he lost because he dedicated two years of his life to training up this team. While it only took me a couple of hours to craft a Hilda that could make all of his dreams fall in the water. I also mentioned that they're looking for something special in this volcano, but we honestly have no idea what that could be. So they say hasta la vista, and our luck doesn't stop there because a shiny appears as well. My favorite generation 5 shiny, Boldor. And I feel like I'm a kid finding Minecraft diamonds here. And 
and since that's what Baldor kind of looks like, that's also going to be his name. Craft a diamond pickaxe from his ores and mine our way out of here, for it first run into one of those weird cave bats that Minecraft has, but this one's green. Turns out to be a Noibad, one of my favorite Pokemon, and seeing it in its beautiful shiny form makes me even happier. Let's evolve this thing as quickly as possible. We ended up on Route 110 and see some of the professor's aides talking. That's when Team Plasma also gets out of the cave, but instead of interacting with us, she decides to run away and go find the rest of her Team Plasma friends. We then start to conversate with the two scientists, and they explain that Team Plasma is obviously being controlled by Getzes, or at least it was all of these years ago. These two have been taking care of Pokemon that Team Plasma just dropped because they were too weak or injured very badly. Meaning that Team Plasma probably has a grip on the entire region already, which is very scary to think about. As a parting gift, they give me some ability capsules that Professor Juniper gave to them. As they leave, they wish us luck in saving the region. On Route 113, we find the same karate dudes that we managed to beat on Route 107. You know those ones that mentioned that we would have to find their master as well? I guess this is that time, because we've reached their dojo. This dojo kind of works like a battle tower, but there is only like six floors. On the first floor, we easily managed to defeat their master and get a thunderstone as a reward. On the next one, a water stone, and then we just get a couple of nice DMs like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam after defeating some random bosses, and on the final floor, Iris was waiting for us. A very good final boss that I'm honestly scary to take on at this point. In the dialogue leading up to the battle with Iris, we say that true Pokemon trainers try to win with their favorites, which is the most beautiful quote ever. So I once again pick the three Pokemon that are the best for me, Hilda, Wu, and Poe. As it turns out, Hilda was able to do most of the damage by flinching a ton of times on the Lapras and eventually just taking it out with Air Slash. Hexras almost fell to Air Slashes too, but got the better of me in the end. So I sent out Wu with three Earthquakes, we take down that Hexras, but also the final Pokemon, Agron, to almost get a clean win, and as a reward, she even gives me a Master Ball. Don't know what I'm going to use this on, but it's definitely a nice addition that I can maybe use on a Magikarp. After leaving the dojo, our path leads us to Nimbasa City, home of the Electric-type specialist, Elisa. Her gym seems to have gotten quite the downgrade from the catwalk she had in Black and White 2. This is honestly kind of a problem with the game. All of the gyms just look the same. One room, no trainers. A little bit uninspired, really. Really, but we'll still take her on. My starter didn't really do all that much, only being able to take down Galvantula before Emolga's Wrath finished me off. Bo managed to survive from attacks from Emolga and Mega Amphros with 2 HP remaining while paralyzed, but still took down the mighty dragon with hair, and the rest of the team fell to Excredil's rock slides and earthquakes, nothing else was needed for Elisa to give me her gym badge. Try to move over to round 116, but our path gets blocked by a Team Plasma grunt that doesn't want to let us through because his boss is conducting research on a nearby swamp. So we head over there and meet up with a Shadow Triad once again. He's actually on edge of switching sides because he doesn't really believe in taking away people's Pokemon. He just believes in somebody that can reunite everybody so that people and Pokemon can live in harmony. And in order to find that, he has to test us. So while last time he defeated me with level 50 Pokemon, this time it's our turn to pummel this guy into the ground. Samurott and Ash's Ambipom make quick work of his Mega Absol with Fury Cutter and Revenge, but he then brings out a level 65 Aselgore. Combined with that Bisharp there, they easily one-shot my Hilda and Ash's Ambipom. Our combination of Excredil's Earthquake and Torterra's Rock Slide crumbles these two, then I only have my level 34 Noibad against their level 70 Banette. Not looking too great. Ash can just clean this up easy, because we're not required to have any Pokemon alive anymore. After he's defeated, he says that we need to find out if we have all the traits to become a hero. And even gives me a scope lens as a reward. I went to check out the swamp myself, but it just led to a dead end. Despite looking pretty aesthetically pleasing, and having tree sprites that look like skeletons, there really wasn't all that much here. 
here, so I left it alone. Evolved Abby into Malamar, whose color scheme is less exciting than its normal form, but still not a bad shiny. In the next town, our path gets blocked by a worker and a bisharp, and we also see a Togekiss flying across the trees, which was beautiful. Even the gym leader Clay wasn't in town, but you all know what Clay means, Driftville City. The location with the best music Pokemon has ever introduced. Clay is in pursuit of Team Plasma as well, as they've taken over the local power plant in order to achieve something. So we go and investigate ourselves. Here we see another Shadow Triad harassing some of the employees here. Stealing their Pokedexes, heading further into the power plant because they're apparently trying to foil Mr. Getz's plans. Go to the end of the power plant where we meet up with the Shadow Triad once more. Here we learn that he's only loyal to Getz's because he saved his life as a child, a lot like N in Black and White one. Even after we explain some great points to this guy, he still doesn't want to believe that Pokemon can be happy with people, and we clash once more. His team wasn't that different from his Shadow Tried brothers, only having a Ninjask, Mega Banette, Absol, and Bisharp. Luckily, Ash led off with a Gliscor here who did most of the work with Earthquake, while my extra drill was out in the back helping out. As he loses, he then says that he really enjoyed this battle, but that he's gotta get going because everything he needed to do here has been completed. After getting a pretty useless mystic water, I was going to head to the gym. But something came up. I ran into this very strong trainer, stronger than any gym leader or champion I've ever seen. He had a Lugia, Mega Garchomp, and a ton of other strong pseudo-legendaries. How this guy got a Lugia, I have no idea. But I kind of feel like this is the guy from that Lugia movie that came out back in 2003. Anyway, enough nostalgia tripping, time to head over to Clay's gym and show him my shiny giants. Hilda here got really lucky in this fight, being able to get Hippo down, down into red health on turn 1, then he swaps out into Excadrill, one-shotting that thing with a Water Pulse too. Confusing the next Pokemon Seismitoad, allowing me to eventually take it out with Water Pulses as well, and surviving a couple of Power Whips. We then fill up Mamoswine and Crocodile with Hydro Pumps, but Claydol avoids one and counters back with an Earth Power, bringing down Hilda, but she definitely did a good job. We still have Poe in the back, so as our Dragon Warrior crunches him two times in a row, we get another Gym Badge. Shortly after we have one of our best evolutions ever, Noibat into Noivern. On round 118, we run into some psychics that wanted a battle, so me and Ash showed them that muscle is indeed better than mind. We also find a shiny phantom, one of the most beautiful shinies ever. I love the white combined with the orange. Don't tell me you hate this shiny because you're lying to me. After appropriately naming it Fanta, my favorite soda, we enter a snowy forest where we encounter the seal in the water and would you just look at this background. There's literally a Greninja swimming there. I can't stop looking at it, but all of this snow does make me very anxious because does that mean that Team Plasma has succeeded? Have they taken over the region? No, oh, all of my suspicions were for nothing. We have just reached a Curious City, home of the Ice-type gym leader Bryson, hence why it's so cold here. I wonder if he's secretly working with Team Plasma to freeze over the world. My suspicions get put aside immediately because Alder, the champion, and Marshall, one of the Elite Four members, step in as Bryson has got an announcement for them. He wants to go back into acting to show the people of the world that bonds with Pokemon are actually necessary for the world to work. This will probably take off some of the pressure that Team Plasma is putting on the region right now. The Marshall and Alder don't think this is a good idea because he might get hurt by Team Plasma if he becomes such a big figure in movies and TV again. Bryson doesn't really seem to care about all of this and leaves the gym to go and pursue his acting job. Leaving this town without a gym leader for now, which means we're going to have to backtrack to somewhere. So first we leave the gym, but Iris comes up to me and says that she can help. Backtracking can be a very tedious process, but with this HM that she just gave me, we can fly across the region, back to Nakreen City, following the route there and eventually ending up against a Mega Lucario from a random trainer that totally wiped my ass. On our way to the next city, we also found a random airport in the middle of a pool of water with people walking across it, so if this plane would leave, all of these people would be dead. A very weird design choice that will probably end up in court sooner rather than later. But this plane was definitely a foreshadowing for Mistrelton City, home of Skyla. We all know that she's a flying type user, but her city is also full of windmills, amplifying that fact even more. In the city, we also meet up with Professor Juniper because apparently Team Plasma has been sighted here. Skyla also recognizes the professor.
professor and heads over to talk to us both. We do some introductions. The professor thanks me for completing the Pokedex, which I haven't done. And to be completely honest with you, she hasn't even given me a Pokedex. So I don't even know what this lady is on about, but she must be going crazy and even hands me a Master Ball for doing nothing. Even Skyla thinks her memory is fading. The professor then leaves and Skyla offers us a battle. But Ash says that he has a better idea. Why don't we do a double battle? Us two against the gym leader. As we start the battle, I'm pretty sure Ash is trying to boycott me because he sends out a superior against a flying type gym leader. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this guy either. He started spamming Surf and Hydro Pump while superior went down to all the flying type moves, but then he brought down Crocodile, which is also not the greatest matchup against Swanna. Luckily, it had Thunder Fang to take down the oversized Goose. While I took care of the big bad Skarmory. Next to Pokemon Archeops and Braviary didn't live long either, as I Hydro Pumped the Fossil out of the sky as Crocodile went down and they brought in Mandibus, Ash decided to bring out Seismitoad. I spammed Ice Beam to freeze the American Eagle and make it crash into the ground. Rivlim came out while I took down Mandibus with two more Ice Beams, but unfortunately, Hilda fell after this. She can't keep taking down everything. Extra Drill has to do some work too. Or should I say Apple, as I just Dragon Pulse a couple more times while Toad hits it with Ice Punches? To gain my 6 Gym Badge together with my best friend Ash. A great battle, even though it didn't really pick the best Pokemon here. Now you might think we have to go straight back to Bryce to get our 7 Gym Badge, but first we run into the Shiotride and Team Plasma once more. And here they go on to explain the old tale of the two warriors that had the black and white dragons. They had different ideals, so these two legendary dragons and warriors fought against each other. And after this beautiful Zekrom Reshiram story, they go on about Pokeballs once more. Saying that once Team Plasma is in charge, the Pokeballs will be gone and the Pokemon will be free. And now this shtick is starting to get really frustrating. So me and Ash shout, shut your mouth and challenge the Shadow Triad to a battle, but that might have been a mistake because he has the Weather Trio, Thunderous, Tornadus, and Landorus. And they're all level 90. I don't know how this is fair, but this level scaling is insane. With Hilda and Ash's Greninja, we still managed to come out on top by Hydro Pumping and Ice Beaming all three of them. The rest of his team was easy to take down. The help of Ash's Talon Flame when Greninja went down, that Flare Blitz through Bisharp and Absol to win us the battle. After that, they flee the scene because they know they can't win anymore. Then the White Stone just shows up out of nowhere, and Ash explains that this is Reshiram and that it will only show its true form if the chosen trainer turns out to be one of us. And then the stone just disappears. Don't know where the story is going, but let's head to Bryson. Did I mention the level jump ups? Yeah, he also has a full level 76 team. While the only level 76 Pokemon on my side is Samurott, and there is no real place to grind, so after getting my ass beat by the ice type Titan, I have to go back through the route to take on a ton of trainers so that the rest of my team will hopefully catch up to Hilda. And it seems like almost every end of every Every route has these boss trainers, which I don't really understand, but they always give you some kind of dialogue that is not important, and a TM once you defeat them. Anyway, a big grinding sesh later, and my Riolo still hasn't evolved, even though it's level 70. I know it's normally friendship based, but I have found out that it's because my game is in nighttime and Riolo only evolves at daytime. I tried to change my in-game clock, but that didn't work, so now we're stuck with a level 70 Riolu. Great. I start off with Poe against his mega a bomb snow as it sets up the hail, which is going to benefit his entire team. I go for a swords dance and a hammer arm, which still doesn't kill by the way. I was about to finish it off with bullet punch, but it brought out Weavile, so I hit another bullet punch to get some extra damage off before Poe goes down. At least two of his Pokemon have barely any HP left. So I then go into Hilda because I'm about to take it out with Aqua Jet, but it swaps out into Vanillux and hits me with a freeze dry before I take it out with two hydro pumps. I also bring down Jugong into Red Hill with a Surf and a hydro pump, but my god of the sea has taken too much damage and gets forced out into Wu who just rock slides Jugong, the next Pokemon, Weavile 2, and finally Beartick. I was also going to be able to take down Cryogonal if it hadn't frozen me, and we all know what that means, my mole gets put back into its hole. My last hope here is Abby because the other two of my team are not going to be able to hit anything, but 
luckily all we need is a superpower on the cryogonal and finally a superpower on a bob of snow to end the ice age and go on our merry way with our seven badge in hand. We all know the final city is Opelucid. So we take the nearest route over there and run into Professor Juniper as well as Iris. The professor goes on to explain a very old tale about a huge meteor that crashed into the earth many years ago. It left a crater, but not just any crater. The crater was very cold and covered in ice, meaning that there was a Pokemon inside of this meteor. This Pokemon is Curum, and Team Plasma is going to try and use Curum to freeze over the region. So the professor then gives me the nearest directions to the crater, but you know, before saving the world and defeating the legendary dragon, we have to get a new gym badge. So we go to Iris his grandpa, Drayden, and Riolu is actually going to put in some work for the first time, I think, in this entire video, using Final Gambit on Dredigan to almost take it out. I mean, it really wasn't all that useful, but it's better than nothing. As I try to take down Dredigan the next turn with Wu's Earthquake, he does the unthinkable, swapping out into High Dragon to cancel it out with Levitate, so I'm forced to use Rock Slide, ultimately just give him the advantage as my extra drill goes down. Apple then comes in, and despite being 10 levels lower, it still Dragon Pulses High Dragon into Oblivion, as well as the next Pokemon, Haxorus, after surviving a Dragon Claw with 10 HP. Absolute goat right there. The rest of the team, meaning Flygon, Celamance, Altaria, and Dredigan, all go down to Hilda's Ice Beams. Honestly, Drayden was way easier than Bryson, as Bryson was probably the hardest battle so far, and maybe in this entire run. We'll just have to wait and see what awaits us. Drayden takes us outside, where Drayden explains the story of Zekrom and Reshiram, and about how Reshiram was created to create a world where everybody can live in harmony, and Zekrom was created to create a world of hope. So I don't really understand why they are fighting because both of those worlds seem pretty good if you combine them, but hey, people on Discord these days argue for way less. He also talks about Kieran and how he was also part of this trio, but he has lost almost all of his power. He can only get it back if he gets fused again with Zekrom and or Reshiram by using the DNA splicers that Drayden has. Team Plasma overheard this and stumbles out of the gym asking where they are and to hand them over because they've been waiting for this moment for over two years. That's when they ambush Drayden and we could help him here but Drayden sends us off because the entire route has been taken over by Team Plasma so he orders us to go and help the people over there. So after punting all of the grunts out of the route we go back to Drayden and he seems to have defeated his Team Plasma members as well and as a reward he gives me the DNA splicers because he knows that if one person can save the region it's probably us. Just like in black and white too, Shadow Triad shows up and steals the DNA splicers from me and vanishes into nothing. Drayden asks for my help once more and even says, N, please, you have to do everything. I know, just like in every single Pokemon game, the protagonist does everything, while the literal gym leaders and champions of the region stand by and do nothing. We figured out where to go, we have to go back to our starting town, surf there, because now we've unlocked surf, and go to a teeny tiny little island, because apparently that's where Curum is located, not in a crater whatsoever. And after entering the cave and going through way waves of Team Plasma members, we once again run into one of the Shadow Triads, and I honestly just wish that they had names because I have no idea which of the three is which. He's here to eliminate me before we can stop their final plan, and I don't know how this is fair, but he has a full level 100 team. While I'm still lagging 20 levels behind, not that it really matters because my boy Ash turned up big time in his battle, mega evolving his Glalie and one-shotting almost everything on his team. If it wasn't for Ash, I would have gone back and grinded everybody up to level 100. Luckily, we can move on without any more time wasting. Once the battle's over, he still manages to escape and bring the DNA splicers to Getsis. So we make our way through the cave, eventually reaching the icy part in the middle of it. And this is where we have our very first encounter, and probably the only encounter, with the man himself. Gets this. Normally he's our father, but here we don't really seem to even know him. He mentions that this is the place where Kyurem draws all his power from. If he's able to stay here, he's able to use ice to cover the entire region. So if you don't manage to stop them now, Ice Age the Movie 5 will be reality. As it turns out, Ash saved the region two years ago and Getsis is still very mad about it. He looks Ash in his eyes and says that he will freeze him right here and now. And attacks us both 
in a battle. Ashes Neuvern and my Rionlu easily take down Seismitodo's final gambit and Dragon Pulse while Koffer Grigas is still on the field. Bring out Hilda to take down the next Pokemon Drapion with Hydro Pump, just like Electros, Bufalant, Hydragon, and finally Koffer Grigas all die to the Neuvern Hilda combo. Don't ask me why the boss of Team Plasma has worse Pokemon than all of the Shadow Triads, it just doesn't make any sense to me why are their Pokemon level 100, why are his Pokemon level 85, why do they have legendaries? Why does he not? Luckily, we're almost done with the game because there is too much shenanigans going on here. Gets his leaves and can't believe that he lost to someone so incompatible. But we run after him and eventually end up in Kurum's lair. But Gets his isn't done. He goes on to explain that he has extracted all of Kurum's power, meaning that it's just a shell of its former self. Not only shows his cruel nature, but also that he doesn't care about anything because he even treats a legendary Pokemon as just a tool. With the power they got from Kurum, they're going to freeze down the region, and that's when the Shadow Triad shows up saying that everything is in place for their ultimate plan to come to fruition. So gets his leaves and tells the Shadow Triad to keep me busy. But this battle is not in your favor. You have to battle all three of them in a row. All three of them have level 100 themes and six Pokemon. Oh yeah, and remember when Ash helped me out with his Glalie in the last level 100 battle? Well, this time he just gets one shot by every single thing. So after attempting this battle like 20 times in a row, I knew I had to get a level 100 team if I ever wanted to beat this game. So I evolved my Phantom into the even better looking Trevenant, who's ready to lay a curse on the Shadow Triad. But not only that, I also found a shiny as Cavalier that I will add to the team, as a Bug Steel type with only a Fire Weakness is always going to be useful. I would go over all of these battles, but they're honestly pretty insignificant with my level 100 team. I just Earthquaked, Surfed the big egg scissors with my newly acquired Scavalier. The second guy also just got mostly Earthquake and Rock Slid. And the third one, honestly, you already know what happened. We managed to destroy them with or without Ash. We don't need him because most of the time in these battles, he was pretty useless. Once we win these three battles, a Shadow Triad leaves and says that we can never prevent the region from being covered in ice. But then a random scientist shows up and tells me that I just need a password in order to stop Kurum from giving energy and that's apparently going to stop all of Team Plasma's plans. So scour the internet for the right password and after about one hour of searching and a ton of wrong passwords, I eventually found out that it was Jello, but I think in Portuguese. Also make sure to not put this in caps because otherwise it won't work. Once the password has been given in, Kurum will attack you, you can then defeat it and even then the scientist still says that Team Plasma is going to take over the world even though we stopped everything. Okay, so I headed over to Victory Road. What happened then? I ran into Iris, defeated her in a Pokemon battle. She even thanks me for coming with her on this journey because she's realized that she can overcome any challenge if her Pokemon are by her side. If that's really the case, she would have taken down Team Plasma. Instead, it was our job. After a long journey, me and Ash come in front of the Pokemon League, but he's going to leave me here now because only one person can enter the League. He's going to pursue another journey of his own, but thanks Thanks me for all of the beautiful moments we've had together, that it was obviously an honor for him to have fought by my side. I think the same of you, buddy. But now, it's time to enter the Elite Four and ghost it up because Chantal is our first opponent. Against her, we can only choose three Pokemon, so this should be an easy battle. I just led off with Fanta against her, Koffer Grigas, Shadow Claw did twice, Frost Glass came out, Shadow Bolt me, and then I went into Wu, who then took down this Frost Glass with Rock Slide and Mega Gengar with Earthquake. A very easy first battle. Onto Grimsley, where we only needed one Pokemon, Hilda, Freeze and wash away Hunchcrow, Scrafty, and Crocodile. Caitlyn is even easier than Grimsley as Silmore can X Scissor and hack Masharna, Gothithel, and Mega Alakazam into a million little pieces. And lastly is Marshall. It was a little bit harder, but Neuvern finished off throw with a couple of hurricanes. Abby destroyed Mega Lucario with superpower, and finally my dead tree made his sock even more dead with horn leeches. Now normally all would be the champion here but he's been replaced 
by Iris, just like in Pokemon Black and White too. Even though we just battled her in front of the Victory Road, she's back with a team that's 10 times as strong as 5 minutes ago. Still more starts out against her High Dragon, which we just ex scissor. And before I go any further, the background is once again impeccable, makes me think of a stadium in Pokemon Sword and Shield. On to Haxorus, who crits me with a close combat that lowers his own defenses, but also give me a headache. Dragon pulls it out of here with Apple, while Abby goes on to take down Lapras with superpowers and Archeops with Psycho Cut. Salamence ultimately finishes me off with a Dragon Claw after a Mega Evolution, so I bring in Apple again, Dragon Pulls two times, and the last Pokemon, Agron, gets surfed out of here by my starter, the perfect way to end this. And with that, we have defeated Pokemon Dragonstone 3. Uh, boy, am I happy this game is done, because I would give it a 2 out of 10. This is a horrible experience to play. I have no real reason to recommend this game to you, other than the fun mechanic where you have to travel through the region with Ash, the cool new backgrounds, and the feature Team Plasma takes away your Pokemon if you lose a battle. Besides all of that, this game feels super empty, the story is non-existent, the gyms are very uninspired, every single route you get through feels the same, there is no real special event. This is like if you would want to play Pokemon Black and White, but you bought a fake copy of a random market somewhere. It might be because of the bad translation, because this game was first in Portuguese, but I highly doubt a good story would have actually fixed this game, because it has a ton of fundamental issues. It is pretty challenging, which is kind of fun, but it's way too random seeing Iris in that fighting tower all of a sudden. I mean... I'm just going to shut up about it, this game is bad. With that out of the way though, I do want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description, it's always appreciated but not needed. I also want to thank Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video once again, don't forget to download their game, it helps me out, but also them. And with all of that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.